if I cease to like worry about the channel and the direction it's going in and how many views I get or subscribers or members or whatever, the better the channel does. Like the more effort I put into getting viewers or tailoring the content towards what I think people want, then the views go down. But when I just do what I want and stop being, I guess, so nice, then the views go up. So <laughs> go figure. <clears throat> so that's what I'm going to do. Of course, I am always open to suggestions of uh, what people would like to see or what entertains them or whatever. But hey, I uh, I'm just going to I'm just going to do put out what what I would like to see on a channel like this. And of course, keeping it all within the buoys of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, keeping it in the lines of the grammar. Some of you out there, loyal viewers, I appreciate you. Loyal members, I appreciate you. You watching this channel, seeing what's going on, seeing some of the things I post. Uh, got into some interesting interactions over there on TikTok with some goofy over there that, of course, they never use their their name. They always hide behind a nom de guerre, never have a profile picture. And then come on like they're some sort of expert about something. <laughs> so I take it with a grain of salt. And one guy came on there and started talking about it. It's just language. It's like, bro, in the name it says grammar. It's not language. It's a grammar. It's a grammar that may be interfaced with language, but it's a grammar. It's different. English is a language. Russian is a language. Correct sentence structure is a grammar. And it can be used with English or Russian or whatever you want to use it. So that was a, a strike right off the back. And then they start saying, why don't you just go to school to learn the legal system, something that actually works in the real world? And that told me right away, okay, well, this person's either a troll or, you know, why are they here? I don't know. So I, I jousted back and forth with them for a minute. And then I made a video and I posted it up here on the short section. It's the most recent short that I posted. You can see it on there. Where uh, I basically explained to the individual what correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar is. And uh, of course, I offer a venue for them for closure. They can email me. I'll set up a video consultation. They can ask me whatever they want to, face to face, in the confidential. And they wanted, oh, they wanted proof as to how, if this stuff really works. And I was like, you know, I'll show you all the proof you want in the confidential. You contact me. We'll do a video thing. I will show you documents, my own personal documents, documents from clients that I've had. I will show you the proof. That's stuff that I can't show in the public for confidentiality reasons. I mean, I'm not going to betray the trust of my clients. And then they wrote back, no, no way. Only in the public. On here. We do it in the public or not at all. It's like, okay, well, so I can see where he's coming from or she, whatever she, whatever it is, it, where it's coming from. I don't want to misgender them. For Odin's sake. So I knew right away they're a joker. They're not serious, completely internet goofy. And I blocked them, which I don't know, folks. It's so satisfying to hit that block button sometimes. So satisfying. It feels good. So, oh, you folks out there, if you're listening, uh, Marcel Lyra, whoever you are, it was. Uh, it was a pleasure to hit the block button on you, bro. You know, because you called me brother. Coming on like you're worried about me and my welfare and what's going on. Because people are getting frustrated with you because you're being mean. <laughs> All right, bro. If people think that I'm being mean, 
then this probably is not the venue for them. They can go somewhere else where people are more nicer, more nicer, right? Again, like I said at the beginning here of the video, the direction of this channel is going to be based upon what, what I'm, you know, planning on doing. N not really what I think the public wants, because I find it works better that way. You know, staying within the principles of the balance of the owner and the grace, maintenance of rule, one rule, equal position of peace and neutrality. Of course, I'm going to stay within those buoys. But I'm also going to return the kuleana that I get. The energy you bring, I will return it to you. The sound of one hand clapping, is there a sound? If a tree falls in the woods and no one's there to see it, or hear it, or witness it, does it still fall? But when you put it in the context of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, you may only convey a claim of what you personally witness from your perspective. There is no assumption presumption in correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. It is a grammar of facts. And those facts are positioned with position lodial phrases. The mathematical interface, one plus two equals three, three minus two equals one. When you have one plus two equals three, you have the factors one, two, and three. When you quote unquote check that problem to make sure that equation, to make sure that it is mathematically sound and correct, you do it backwards. Three minus two equals one. The factors maintain the same value forwards as they do backwards. A three is still a three, a two is still a two, a one is still a one. The equal sign is equal. It's always equal, it's neutral. It does not modify anything, nor is it modified by anything. The only thing that's different is the plus and the minus. And that is the function of the correct sentence structure positional. There are four positionals, four of, with, and by. Just like plus is congruent with minus, multiplication is congruent with division, four is congruent with by, of is congruent with with. It's very simple. I just explained it to you in like, what, 10 seconds? That's the mathematical interface. <clears throat> we got some folks over in Denmark that try and make it more, way more complicated than what it is. It's not complicated, folks. It's very simple, and that's the beauty of it. And that's what I found. And that's why I've been doing this for six years. That's why I've stuck with it, because it works. And I'm always open to teaching people who are open to learning. So if you're open to learning, Kardaki Guatam, if you have a question, a correct sentence structure question about the grammar, feel free to ask. Matter of fact, you can ask whatever you want to ask. I'm just here to talk while I'm uh, doing other things. So you might have uh, some periods of extended silence here while I move about the domicile and perform different tasks and whatnot. What else was I going to talk about? Oh, yeah, this Marcel Lira individual. I don't, he, he came onto my channel a few times over the years. I do remember way back, like, geez, in 2020, maybe? On Colin Russell hyphen J. Colin Gould's Federal Postal Court website, he basically quote unquote disqualified this Marcel Lira. Which, folks, if I hear Russell or anybody else say that they disqualify someone, it means exactly nothing to me. So, Marcel Lira, if you're out there listening, my judgment of your character or what it is you do or don't do has nothing to do with what Russell J. Gould says. The amount of value I put in Russell's word is probably the same amount percentage of correct sentence structure knowledge that Marcel possesses, which is little to none. By my experience, by my looking at what he's written in the past, in not only in emails, but in comments. So there's no worries there. I don't really care what Russell says, but it's interesting that he, at the time, I think it was more like 2019 because 
Russell was trying to go around, and this is my guess as what he was doing. He was trying to gain control of the whole correct set of the whole i'm not going to use that word the whole quantum grammar community he was trying to gain control of it and corral everyone into his barnyard basically he was trying to direct everyone to do what he wanted them to do so anyone that would not subordinate themselves to him anyone who was out there navigating autonomously trying to do things on their own like maybe marcel was i don't know if they wouldn't bend the knee, then Russell disqualified them. Like Mark Pichon Christopher, like uh, uh, this Marcel fella. Uh, there are a few other folks out there. There's a guy from Canada, Richard, I uh, hmm, can't remember his last name. There's a few folks out there. And so Russell would disqualify him. And then of course, Mark, lowercase k, was trying to do the same thing that Russell was doing. And uh, so Mark started disqualifying people. <laughs> but the thing is, how can someone with zero qualifications disqualify someone else? You can't. It doesn't work that way. Let's see, we have a comment. Carter Key Guadam says, it works. Have you read the book by RJD? I don't know who RJD is. And no, I have not read any book by any RJD. Please include the author's full name and the name of the book. And maybe I can better answer your question. That's the thing about a question. If you're not clear about it, then you're not going to really get a clear answer. What you get is what you... What you get out of it is what you put in, and that is true. That's rule one, rule equal. So while we wait for that, let's go back to what I was talking about. Uh, Marcel Lira. So I guess he was a federal postal judge in California somewhere, and I guess he did work with David Wynn Miller at one point many years ago. I guess, allegedly, I don't know for sure. I just know what he said. And so I'm definitely not gonna take someone like that at their word. <clears throat> someone who talks about like aliens and things like that. But uh, not saying aliens aren't, you know, don't exist. I'm just saying someone who talks about stuff that you can't prove with the continuance of the evidence, the way that I can prove that a cup exists or coffee exists or a car exists, you know, I'm not going to take them too seriously. Because all of my correct set structure claims, I can prove as fact. I can prove with the continuance of the evidence, that's why I put it in there. It's a fact. I can prove it to another contract part. But this guy would contact me every now and then and, like, level some sort of criticism because... Well, first of all, because I think it's because he didn't have, doesn't have closure on the grammar. So he would see something that I was doing that was different than what David did. And he would automatically think, oh, that's wrong. You got to do it this way. Here's the thing, folks. If you look at, Dave, for example, David Windmiller's website or David Windmiller's book, there are mistakes and errors on every single page. Dozens of them. I've done videos. I've shown this. I have a continuance of the evidence. This is not a guess. I can certify what I'm saying right now. But there are dozens of mistakes on every single page of David Wynn Miller's book and his website. As a matter of fact, before he passed away, I was working with David to correct his website. And I have proof of that as well. So anyways... It got to the point where, like, I would respond back to him. I would offer him a consultation. This has been going on for years, folks. But he would never accept. Never. Never wanted to step up onto the geometric level playing field of communication, i.e. a video consultation, where we use our correct names, <clears throat> we can see each other, and we can communicate. He didn't want to do that. He just wanted to mitigate in the comments field. And it's still true to this day. That's why I blocked him. 
So to me, that's sus. I understand some folks are shy about things like that. You know, they, they don't want to uh, show their faces. They don't want to confront someone face to face. I understand that. It can be scary. Some folks find it hard to even comment. Like, for example, on this uh, video you're watching right now, or listening to, actually, because you can't see me. Uh, folks are afraid to comment because they're like, I don't know what to ask. I don't know what to say. Don't want to be embarrassed. I know that was a big thing when I started. I did not want to do live streams because I would think, oh, my gosh, what if I make a mistake? What if I'm wrong about something? It's going to be so embarrassing. And then I stopped giving a crap about what other people thought, and I was fine from there. Actually, in reality, to articulate it a little more uh, eloquently, I cultivated humility, and I realized that everyone makes mistakes, including myself, and I'm going to make mistakes. The important thing is, is learning from those mistakes. And so I have no fear of making a mistake in the public. I have no fear of saying the quote unquote wrong thing in public. Because in a true stop and correct, the individual would exercise humility and just correct what they're doing and move on. It's that simple, folks. It's okay to make mistakes. <clears throat> as long as they're not willful mistakes, as long as you're not, like, doing it on purpose. Which brings up another subject. The theory that some folks have that David Wynn Miller purposely put errors in his book. And then sold it for 200 bucks. Isn't that an interesting thing? Because me as a tutor... I've been teaching for over six years. That is unfathomable to me. I would never put out a product that I knew had mistakes all over it, that I knew could be, could facilitate someone who uses it going to jail. Like if someone would take David Wynn Miller's book, copy and paste one of his templates, and fill in the, the blank parts and then try and use it in a foreign vessel and dry dock and then they end up in jail because there's mistakes all over it. I could never live with myself if I did something like that. That's the dichotomy of David Wynn Miller. I personally don't think that he did it on purpose. I purposely, I, I, I don't think so. I really don't think so. Because I don't think David Miller was a malicious person. From what I know of him personally, from having conversations with him, I didn't sense any maliciousness or any trickery or subterfuge in the things he said. I could have totally been reading him wrong. I have no idea. I didn't know him like that. You know, I didn't, I wasn't friends with him or anything. I just think, uh, well, grammar performances speak for themselves. The grammar performances that are in the public and no, I have yet to see a correct grammar performance from either Russell J. Gould or David Wynn Miller in the public and or in the private. And I've shown this, if you can go to my uh, audit playlist, or even my Coral Blade Grotto broadcast playlist. There are numerous examples of the mistakes in their grammar. And not only do I show the mistakes, but I also show how to correct them. Because that's rule one, rule equal. You present a problem, you better present a solution. Because if you only present the problem with no solution, that is the sound of one hand clapping. It's like you get all these folks on the internet complaining about this or that. Like, we got to protest. We got to do this. We got to blah, blah, blah. 
Well, you're identifying a problem. You've identified a problem. So what? You don't know what to do about it. So now you're just going to cry about it. You're going to whine about it. You're going to yell about it. You're going to make other people's lives difficult because you don't know how to solve the problem for yourself. That's basically what you're doing. And protesting, don't even get me started on that. Protesting are for people, quote unquote citizens, who are a part of a country or a city, quite literally, and they have a government that gives them rights. You have this right, you have that right. The right to bear arms, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so those rights come from a piece of paper that was written or that is used by the government as rights that, that citizens have. And then a citizen feels like, well, my rights are being violated. So they go protest. So they're asking the government who gave them those rights to change something. So the people who are violating the protester, the protester is asking the violator to stop violating them. It's sort of like a nanny state, right? Like you have the nanny who's there to care for the little babies and then the nanny starts abusing the babies and then the babies start crying, asking the nanny to stop abusing them. Does that make any sense to you folks? Does it make more sense to stop participating with that nanny shit and start doing something on your own? Doesn't it make more sense to do that, to get out of that, to just throw those rights away and say, forget about it. Who cares about that? Let's just use rule one, rule equal, honor, grace, peace, neutrality. It's that simple. A lot of folks don't get it, though. Everybody has a choice. Contract is by consent. Everybody has a choice. You can choose to do this. You can choose to do that. Like when folks were dealing with mandates and they had jobs and they were getting paid. And suddenly their place of employment says you have to get this medical procedure if you want to keep your job. So a lot of folks thought, well, we don't have a choice because I have to keep my job. So I'm going to get the medical procedure. So they feel like they were forced. Birdie agrees with me. But there was a choice there, wasn't there? They chose to do that. They could choose to not do it and see what happens. Then they just have to find some other different way to go about it. It depends upon what's important to them. Is their health and their future more important than keeping a job? These are the things you have to ask yourself because everything is by choice. You make a choice. Even when you don't make a choice, you're making a choice. <laughs> I remember there was a comment from a fellow named Romley Stewart on one of my videos where he said, my name is Romley Stewart and I make no claims, period. It's funny because he said, my name is Romley Stewart. I make no claims, but he's making a claim by not making a claim. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Goofy head ass, bro. Russell, what is the best way for people to start learning about this? I mean, uh, do you have a central website? Do you have books? I, I, I have... Uh, teachers out there that are coming along that have been learning the grammar. There's a there's a there's a uh, there's a couple of uh, guys that are doing a real good job. Uh, for one of the guys, his name is uh, Jason Hyphen Matthew Colin Glass. He's been studying the grammar for quite a while. And what's really nice about that guy, I don't even know him. But when he makes a claim and I send him the proof that it's already been established. Mm -hmm. That guy stops and corrects, right? right. Whoa, you got my, you got my honor, dude. You're going to stop and correct once you learn something? Sweet. I'm going to make sure that that guy has people. Mechanics. What happens on one side of the hyphen, hyphen what? 
What comments? Errors. You see things that appear to be names that are spelled wrong. Oh, this was... Uh... In this video I'm looking at, it's called For the Authority and For the Knowledge, period. It was published four years ago. And I do an audit of colon Gordon hyphen Michael colon Schiller's sentences. And literally, well, here, why don't I just show it to you? Let me put this up full screen. Look at this crap. For the Jason hyphen is hyphen making hyphen some hyphen mistakes in his latest video. Folks, how do you say that backwards? Out his latest video by the Jason is... I, if you create a correct sentence structure dictionary... You have to give closure to all of your facts. So in this hyphenated compound quote-unquote fact, Gordon is saying that Jason is a fact, is is a fact, making is a fact, some is a fact, mistakes is a fact. So he has to give closure to all of those in his correct sentence structure dictionary, and then he has to give closure to the entire compound fact, the Jason hyphen is hyphen making hyphen some hyphen mistakes. Not to mention that the ing is a particle of negation. And an in is an incorrect positional because there are only four positionals, four of, with, and by. Four is congruent with by, of is congruent with with. Four is cause, of is concern, with is possessive, by is authority. What is in? What function is in? It can't be a cause. It can't be a concern. <clears throat> it can't be possessive. It can't be authority. So what the hell is it? And then he says, for the I hyphen do hyphen syntax hyphen practice. On the Skype. So when you read it backwards, it becomes off the Skype. <laughs> we could have chatted, past tense. Oh my goodness. Average student capable within two hours with my teaching. Capable of what? Creating quantum gobbledygook like this? Oh, my goodness gracious, folks. I'll bet this fellow hasn't uh, improved either. Because this was a, this was a, four, what, four years ago, yeah. <laughs> That's the same guy that tried to dox me. So I know, I know anyone that comes from the Russell J. Gould contingent, any of his cult followers, I know they're underhanded, untrustworthy, and I don't contract with them, ever, 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 ever. Hey, Jonathan, how you doing? Let's take a look at your name, Jonathan Todd. Your name says, for the Jonathan hyphen Todd, and then it says, of the house of Biglow. Well, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. I apologize if I'm pronouncing B-I-G-E-L-O-W wrong. But the way you've written House of Biglow is, uh, throws the whole thing into adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun. So basically, Jonathan Todd becomes a pronoun. House becomes a pronoun, of is an adverb, and B-I-G-E-L-O-W is a dangling participle verb. Just say it. I had to guess that you are probably well versed in common law. Because I know a lot of common law folks use the word house. I personally don't use that word. I use the word domicile. And I definitely don't use that word in my name. My name is my name, colon Jason Hyphen Matthew colon space glass, period. For the Jason Hyphen Matthew of the glass, period which is correct sentence structure. I just thought I'd point that out. So I could correct with usage of House of Biglow. Well, no, that would be more quantum gobbledygook. 
because you're saying that house is a fact, of is a fact, and bijlo is a fact, put together as a compound fact. But of is not a fact, is it? Of is a positional. So again, uh, I mean, workshops would be what I would direct you towards. You know, if you want to get serious about studying, you want to learn these things that you're asking me about. If you would actually learn the rudiments of the grammar, my friend, these these answers would be, become self-evident. My question to you would be, why is using house necessary anyways? For the house... Yes, that would be considered correct sentence structure. However, where would Jonathan go? Jonathan Todd, I mean. You couldn't say Jonathan for the Jonathan Ton, Todd of the house with the big low. You can't say that either because you every correct sentence structure, if it, if it is a sentence, must have a verb in it. So you have two position lodial fact phrases and then a verb. And so then if you have two position lodial fact phrases in front of the verb, then you must have two after the verb as well. Rule one, rule equal. In the most, in the shortest version of correct sentence structure that you could use. Again, man. I know I've been saying this for years to you. And most folks, most folks that have been on this channel as long as you have and haven't taken a workshop but are still struggling with this type of basic stuff, I would just pretty much just be like, you know, hey, it is what it is. But I think you're a nice guy, and I think that uh, workshops will greatly benefit you. Because it's the same thing. I mean, folks that have been on the channel for two years but have never taken a workshop – they're basically still the same in their knowledge level as they were two years ago because they haven't actually taken a class. It's like someone who wants to study, uh, I don't know, trigonometry. They don't know anything about it, so they start studying by themselves, but they don't take a class or anything. They're never going to really learn it. I can't impress that. I mean, if it's important to you, you know, we all prioritize our, our stuff. Uh, as I explained a while back, the House of Biglow is a fiction banking entity. Well, I don't recall that, Jonathan. I apologize. I do speak with uh, a lot of folks. So, House of Biglow is a fiction banking entity. So, why would you use a fiction entity in your correct sentence structure name? Would be, I guess, my next question. Why would you use a fiction entity in the most important thing, by my view, in someone's construct is their live life claimant name, the name they claim as them. Why would you use a fiction banking entity? Interesting. So in my view, then it's not even necessary to use that. If it were me, which obviously you're not, but I mean, I wouldn't even use any of that. In that realm, it's called a human interface device. Okay, you lost me. I'm talking about correct sentence structure. I'm talking about the domain of facts, not a realm, because realm is no ohms. I did a video on that many, many years ago. So I use the word domain, and this is the domain of fact. And if you're going to put a name out there and punctuate it, then it would necessarily have to be in the domain of fact using uh, the correct sentence structure mechanics, if you're going to be in the domain of fact. If you're going to be in the domain of fiction, you can use whatever you want. You can use colon Jonathan hyphen Todd colon space house of Biglow. That's fiction. So, cool. I mean, if that's what you're doing, that's what you're doing. I'm not here to tell you what to do or not do. I'm giving you my perspective from the domain of fact. 
looking at your name, what you're offering here, I'm looking at it through the lens of correct sentence structure. Does anybody know what human means? Like if you look it up in an etymology dictionary, do you know what human means? And I'm not talking about some dictionary from the 1800s that says human means monster. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about way before that. What is a hue, right? What is a man? Hue, man, basically means a man of color. We as a society feel like, I think we feel like we need to categorize things. We've got to categorize. We have categories for everything. And so I think that's where racism comes from. Trying to categorize people. Just like we categorize files or whatever. It's really not that big a deal, really, in the end. Exactly, realm, meek, no alms, fictional banking entity with an EIN -E number. In other words, a business entity in private communication. I use Jonathan Don Bigelow. Well, colon space, Jonathan Todd is not correct sentence structure. You would have to have the colon tied up against the J, Jonathan, in order for it to be correct sentence structure. And you would have to have a period at the end of the W for it to be correct sentence structure. So in other words, your username on YouTube is not meant to be correct sentence structure, and it's not even meant to be an approximation of correct sentence structure. It's a fiction name, is what you're saying. So, that's interesting. Then why punctuate it at all? Why, why use any punctuation? I mean, if you're gonna be fiction, for me personally, if I'm going to do, you know, contract and fiction, which I do every day, I don't even use colons or anything like that. I just use adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, fiction, babble. It doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, I know that I have closure on correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. I know that I have a correct live life claim, C pass, C treaty, fate, writ, volition, claim, domicile, claim, port authority, claim, all those things. And I know that I tow all these fiction documents as salvages and I'm a steward of my contracts. So I know at the end of the day, I'm correct. So I don't try, I don't mix the two. Personally, I don't. If you have a fiction document, you know, written in adverb, verb, adjective, pronoun, and then you autograph it at the end with your punctuated name, that doesn't mean anything. Your punctuated name doesn't suddenly make everything correct. If that makes sense. In order for your punctuated name to be correct, everything has to be correct on the document. Everything. And if it's not correct, then you would need to syntax the document. And bank those values. Human interface device is superior to corporate persons. Again, this is all fiction public the law. Yeah, which actually has nothing to do with this channel. I mean... That might be interesting to some folks, but I don't dabble in that at all, Jonathan. Because I found, you know, when I first came onto this stuff in 2017, I started learning it because I didn't want to have to learn the ins and outs of the fiction. Learning correct sentence structure and getting closure on it negates having to study fiction at all. For me, that's how it worked. I don't have to know laws, rules, regulations, and codes and statutes and things. I don't have to know any of that. I just have to maintain the rule one rule equal, the balance of honor and grace, and the position of peace and neutrality. That's all I've ever had to do using the 1 by 1.9 Title IV flag, the flag of the land during the time of the contract, with correct banking mechanics, flag mechanics, postal mechanics, and grammar mechanics. And I've been 100% successful with it. And you can too. Any of you can, if you decide to learn the grammar. But that's no small feat. I mean, in the last six years, 
I've had probably little over a dozen students who have actually gotten closure on the grammar and know it well enough to actually use it to the point that they can actually teach it to someone else in a situation under duress. To reach that point, it takes thousands of hours. It takes a commitment that most folks just don't possess the tenacity to do. That's why I say, you know, it's basically for the 1% of the 1% of the 1%. David Wim Miller was right when he wrote his definition, not his definition, sorry. It's a fiction term, stop and correct. When he wrote his finite mean of surf, S-E-R-F, in his book, or actually no, on his website, his original website, which I have a PDF copy of, um, the finite mean of surf. Surf is with this claim as a slave of the bounds with a fiction language as with a low class status of this society as a slave with the quantum math language masters by this claim. So to me, I mean, of course, that's not correct sentence structure, folks. Uh, right off rip, the tilde 20 is not positioned correctly. The first colon of the sentence is not positioned correctly. There is no, there are no two positioned audio fact phrases in front of the verb. So he's violating his own rules that he set down. As is not a positional. I mean, I could go on and on, but I'm not going to because I don't want to rip on the guy because I have a lot of love for the guy. But basically, that was what got me questioning the whole volition behind this correct sentence structure thing as, as it relates to David Wynn Miller, who was a self-professed 92nd degree master mason. It got me thinking about what, what is his true volition? And if, you know, you look at that meaning of surf, now maybe you can start to see why people allege that he made contracts with the Rothschilds, with the Clintons and, and individuals like that, and went to the Vatican, and so on and so forth. It kind of gives you an insight into those things. But that's not something that I would talk about in a public forum with folks who don't have closure on the grammar. And that's not a, a knock on you guys or anything like that, you guys and girls. That's just for safety reasons. Uh, I don't want to get anybody in trouble. Least of all myself. So we'll leave it at that. As long as you talk about what's available in the public, like that finite mean I just shared with you, you're safe. But when you start talking about stuff that happened behind closed doors, you might be violating confidentiality, so you gotta you gotta exercise peace and neutrality. Because it can get a little dangerous out there. Yes, I know. If you run a run with the big dogs, you gotta get off the porch. Well, I've been off the porch for about six years, and I found that running with the big dogs is is not quite what you think it is. I've decided to not be in the pack, so to speak. While they're running over there, I'm walking comfortably over here. And that's what I offer to you folks out there. If you want the same thing, learn the grammar for yourself. Become autonomous. Separate yourself from the pack. Be your own authority. That's what I recommend. That's what I suggest. Why be a part of a group? Because when if you become a part of a group, now you have to answer to the group. Now you have to take everybody else into consideration and then you get egos involved and blah, blah, blah. The thing that I offer is to the only individual you got to worry about is yourself, at least until you get closure under grammar. And then when you get closure under grammar, you become a master of your biosphere. Now you're in a position of autonomy where you can autonomously work with another autonomous individual. And that's very powerful if you can do that. But again, most folks won't because it's just too much work, too much investment. 
they feel like it's not worth it. They, they think that, uh, and this is, this is a guess on my part, they don't see a clear return on their investment, so they're not ready to put that investment down. They feel like they can't afford it. They can't afford the time, the energy, or the value to do it, so they put it off. Because they think it's some mythical, mystical time in the future will be the right time, and that's when they'll do it. But that time never comes. I've had people tell me, man, if I could count the number of folks that have contacted me and said, and I've had consultations with, and they've said, you know what, I'm not ready for a workshop right now, but I will be next week, and I'll contact you, and we'll move forward. And then they never do. If I had a troy ounce of silver for every individual that did that, I wouldn't even need a YouTube channel. I wouldn't need to do anything. I'd be in the Bahamas right now. I'd be in the tropics of Antarctica right now. Hanging with, <laughs> hanging with the Aryans down there. <clears throat> Doing coffee pulls in spaceships. Because <laughs> I would say 99.9% .9 of the folks watching right now definitely do not have closure on correct sentence structure and actually they're probably all beginners so i do take that into account but we've been going over an hour here which i realize you know a decent portion of that hour was silence because i was doing other things but again, you know, you folks have a question, you got something you want to talk about, something on your mind, you got a criticism, a compliment, a question, or a statement, feel free to put it in the chat. I mean, that's what we're here for. If you want to learn something, tell me what you want to learn. Give a focus and I will answer. Otherwise, if you need someone to provide you a focus... You can contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for a workshop. Because with the workshops, there is a focus. It's just like a college course. You go into the first class, you learn this, you learn that, you get your textbooks, you get your homework. And you come back for the next class and you keep progressing. Now, unlike a college class... The class is tailored to you personally. It's tailored to your own personal uh, knowledge level. However fast you want to cultivate your knowledge, that's as fast as I go. If you're a fast learner, it'll be a fast class. If you're a slow learner, we'll take as long as we need. But it's up to you. Completely up to you. All right. So, okay, so we're going on an hour 15. I will be drawing this to a close if no one has any further questions.